Yo. Alright, so uh, this is a follow-up to my last video in which I argued for a certain conceptualization of the analytic a posteriori knowledge. And uh, if you don't, if you haven't seen that video and you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, you're going to want to watch that video. It's about 15 minutes long. So, this video is going to be responding to some of the criticisms that have been levied against my video, both in the comments section and in the uh, in a Facebook post. So the idea, first of all, I want to say I think this is the most controversial video I've uploaded that had original content in it, uh, because. Within a day, there were almost 150 views and almost 30 comments, which probably doesn't seem like a lot to the, uh, those of you who have bigger channels than I do, but for me, that's a real achievement. So, and Dr. Jason J. Campbell announced that video, which probably in no small part contributed to its popularity. So, uh, yeah, controversy is usually good so anyway the, something that surprised me was that there were quite a few criticisms which missed the point kind of of what I was saying let me uh, re, let me summarize give you the readers digest version of what I was saying in that video I had four arguments the first argument was that um, it was a rebuttal to the idea that we can't conceptualize the analytic a posteriori knowledge because it's incoherent. And I responded to that by defining the analytic in the way that it's been defined since Kant as basically a proposition which attributes a property to uh, something which is already contained in the definition of that thing. And what I noted was that nowhere in that definition is it implied that analytic knowledge must be a priori. So if it were true that analytic knowledge is necessarily a priori, that would be synthetic knowledge, not analytic knowledge. And therefore, we should be able to conceptualize its negation, even if you know it is the case. Argument number two was I gave an example of uh, one of Kant's ideas, specifically his derivation of the idea of morality. And I showed that that could be viewed as analytic a posteriori knowledge, whether you agree with it or not. Uh, the third argument, number three, was I gave an example of a proposition which I thought was analytic a posteriori knowledge namely water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen atoms and I show that that was analytic a posteriori knowledge. My fourth argument was setting up a dichotomy. Uh, if Basically if you don't accept that analytic a posteriori knowledge can exist then you necessarily reject the analytic synthetic distinction. You have to say that analytic knowledge is a type of synthetic knowledge. And I did so by analyzing where analytic knowledge comes from. Uh, one of the criticisms that I'm seeing an awful lot is they're going to try to, instead of responding to the arguments I gave, they simply try to prove that analytic knowledge leads to a contradiction. First of all, that doesn't prove anything. Uh, what it does is say, okay, you've managed to prove that analytic knowledge must be a priori, and I've managed to prove that it doesn't have to be, which means that one of us is wrong, and I already knew that. So you have to respond to the arguments that I gave uh, in addition to proof. Uh, proving that analytic a posteriori knowledge is a self-contradiction. But the other thing is that they used a definition of analytic, which is different than the one that I was using. So it, it honestly doesn't even apply to my argument. The definition that I gave, and I probably should have elaborated this on a bit more, I did mention it, 
but the definition I gave was that uh, analytic knowledge is a proposition where the property that's implied of an ob that's stated of an object is already contained in the definition of the object. And I showed that uh, Kant's idea of morality and the water proposition both fell into that category despite also being a posteriori. The second main criticism that I saw was that I'm not using my own words or something like that. Yeah, I did. I mean, I was paraphrasing from a script I had written, and you can view the script on the blog post I linked to in the video description. I'll put it down in this description box as well. But, uh, yeah, it was my original content. The only time I even referenced any other philosophers was during the exposition part. And some people did seem to have a problem with that because they're claiming, quote, I'm not, you didn't even say what's up, you said what other people said what's up, end quote. Yeah. I said that other people said this in order to give the philosophical background to my argument that I didn't use a single argument that someone else made in my arguments. I only mentioned Kant's position on morality in order to criticize his statement that it was synthetic a priori. So I don't even know what you're trying to say here. Uh, anyway. This isn't really a criticism, but some people have noted that what I said was similar to something uh, by Kripke or Hilary Putnam, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, saying that with the proposition water is H2O, and according to him, the argument goes that it's synthetic a posteriori, but it's still necessary. and. That's definitely interesting. I'm going to have to uh, look at that sometime. But finally, the criticism uh, against my argument number three is that basically there's a difference between saying water is not water and water is not H2O. That's the essence of the criticism. And my response is, yeah, but that distinction, but the difference between the two propositions has nothing to do with analytic versus synthetic. According to my argument, they're both analytic propositions. The difference between them is saying, is that saying water is not water is a priori false, and saying water is not made of H2O is a posteriori false, but that doesn't change the fact that they're both analytic propositions. So anyway, those are all the criticisms I see in uh, the comment section so far, and I hope to attract more criticisms and controversy. And uh, one thing that I'm looking forward to here is uh, Dr. Jason J. Campbell himself apparently wants to respond to my original video, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. So uh, I would like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this, and see ya.